Yes, Mayor Moore. Here. Please rise for a silent prayer of moment of reflection, please. Yes, Madam Clerk, we've been asked to to uh, sign and pass on a, a proclamation that is National Safe Boating Week. We would like to remind everyone who's a boater to be safe while you're out on the water. That's all. Thank you. Matters by City Council. Sweepers going back and forth, back and forth, around and all. I talked about this quite a bit uh, a couple of months ago, but nothing ever happened. Is this something that we can look into? Yeah, I'll talk to the DPW about it tomorrow. I think the street sweeping on streets that don't have scheduled times to move your car, right? So parts of Sunset, Third Ave, right? I look out my window the same as Jesse. I see that them street sweeping the middle of the street, right, which is the decent purpose of a street sweeper. So, you know, I know, and I know I've sent you an email, and I know you have stuff on your plate, and I probably just sent one email since you've been here. But I do think it's a, it's, we should either street sweep and, and you know, do the hours on board, sunset, there, wh wherever they aren't, and actually start doing it, or we should... I just don't know what cleaning the middle of the street does, to be perfectly honest with you. Okay, my, myself, Councilwoman Clayton, um, the DPW Superintendent Bill McClave met about this. About, and, Chief Salerno. And, and, and Salerno was there about six weeks ago, I would say. Yeah. Um, and the police and DPW are joining forces to get the comprehensive list of who needs what signs, what curbs need to be repainted for the stop signs. They're looking at curb to curb of of the streets in the city. The goal was to have it done by the end of the summer because it's every street, it's every oh, sign. So it's going to be a comprehensive plan for the entire city so the entire city gets cleaned. Okay. Well, I love that. So we know more about it at the end of the summer. So we're going to see why. Any other matters by council? Yeah, no. One quick thing. and. Uh, it was brought up Monday night as far as the parking garage, and Robert brought it up as far as, like, what are the hours of operation this summer? Now, I think we said, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we want the parking garage open this summer seven days a week. And if that, you know, we have a lot of special ones now. Uh, so is that in the works? And when I say summer, we're not into, as much as it went to 50 degrees or 90 degrees today, we're not in the summer yet, but come peak season, the parking garage will be open seven days a week. Yes, yeah, Salerno and I have talked about that about a month ago. We've had it some spot times. Um, Sunday's been late for now, mm -hmm. but we obviously expect that to, excuse me, to crank up as the, the heat heats up. So, okay. yeah, we're, it's going to be done. And when Robert brought it up Monday, I just forgot to say that, so thank you. That's all I have. Matters from the city manager. None at this time. Matters from the city attorney. Nothing at this time. All right, then at this time, can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? All yeah. opposed? The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and after appropriate warning, 
may terminate any further comments. Each speaker has three minutes to speak, and when you come up to the mic, please set your, uh, say your name and address for the record, please. Jackie Pappas, Asbury Park Chamber of Commerce. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to the business community, to mayor and council, to our residents and fans for a very successful Carousel Awards. We really thank all the support that we got for that event. And I also wanted to remind everyone um, this coming Memorial Day, as we always do, VFW Post 1333 does a wonderful job, along with police and fire, of uh, memorial services. There will be one um, in Fireman's Park at 9 a.m. and then following that at 10 a.m. in Memorial Park. And I have been going for the last six plus years and the crowd grows every year. And if you can spare the time, I suggest that you do and pay tribute to those who serve our country. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, T. Lisinski, Third Avenue. I have a list, so if I lose you, I'll back up and you can ask questions. I've got a list of a couple items. Um, the shared services with Wesley Lake was approved at the Nap Naptone Township meeting Monday, and thank you, John, for putting up with me. And I see it's on the agenda for today to vote on. Yeah, okay. Um, the Friends of, and Citizens of Wesley Lake had a clean up May 15th, and I'd like to thank William Johnson of the Monmouth County Clean Communities Administrator for his assistance and the volunteers that attended. There is more dog waste than foul waste, but even more cigarette butts along the green space along Asbury Park side. I don't know about Neptune because I wasn't on that side. I respectfully request doggy poop stations, garbage, and cigarette receptacles be um, placed, bolted near the picnic area and from the large footbridge west. And I must say that I like the Public Works um, Sandy, board, pre-Sandy boardwalk benches out there. They're really nice, and I commend them for making them. Um, there are two light poles still open with open backs and exposed wires, one stuffed with red plastic cups across from the beer garden and one full of poison ivy across from Lincoln Park. They've been like that for a while. The large footbridge walkway still does not meet handicap regulations. Um, there should be at least a railing going along both sides of the walkway. And there's still, and I know, noticed someone had told me there's two trees planted there and maybe we can spruce it up because they are gateways to the, to the park, to Asbury Park. And I don't understand why Lake Avenue's temporary street lighting is still not replaced on the east end. They've been there for quite a number of years. I see a lot of lights being replaced along the beachfront and Cookman Avenue and all over town. And I just wish they were placed there because they're pretty ugly. Um, when, when reviewing the budget this year, remember to discuss the pond weed for Wesley Lake and even all the other lakes for 2017 so we don't miss it in the pre-budget before you approve the final budget for this early 2017 season. And it's imperative that our governing body um, communicate on the, all the redevelopment plans and initiatives that are going on. Any a shovel ground um, project should be discussed with the, the, the lake commissions because we have brown fields, we have a lot of gook and stuff that actually goes into the lake. So I wanted to tell, I wanted to make sure that everybody is apprised of that and we communicate. Um, and I just like an update on the speeding because I don't see anything being done. And the boardwalk, if the um, can set the restaurants could clean the boardwalks outside their um, restaurants, that'd be great. They're not doing it, majority are not, and it's disgusting. We million dollars on the boardwalk and they're not cleaned up. Um, and this past Saturday, uh, two gentlemen the, the, um, at the um, beer place, the new Dark City, right across the street, two gentlemen were peeing for a very long time with a bunch of people in the building and that there took over about 15 minutes for a police officer even to show up. The delay in the county is way too much. And it was quite embarrassing that these guys were standing out there forever. And that's it. I fit it in. I didn't say it all. I cut it really short. <laughs> It was too much too fast. I didn't get it. Can you, can you give Michael the, your copy? Please. And, and, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As far as the shared services, we agree with you as far as putting in dog stations. I don't see that being a problem. As far as I wish you would go to the Neptune Council meetings and ask them, when are they going to take down the gates? Oh, I, mean, I'm, I plan on doing that. Don't okay, worry. Okay, just I'm because Asbury Park's been more than, like, happy to, like, pick up the cost of uh, repairing the outfall pipe, putting the fence up with no reimbursement from Neptune whatsoever. And every year we say, why don't you take down the gates? And they're told, no, we lock them at midnight. So 
as much as you come here and we're responsive to you. I was here Monday, but, but I had to leave it, it, the well, If you can go to Neptune S, please take down the I gates. Will. Okay, appreciate that. Tell and give, give Michael, you had a lot of requests. That way he can address okay. each one of them and get back okay. to you. All right. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. And the Third Avenue speeding, yes. I believe Michael has the numbers and we'll get them to you because we put the sign out there about a week ago. And that sign just doesn't only say slow down it also measures each car so oh, it, it tells it tells you the highest the lowest and the medium good can they make it the other direction maybe it's been one way for a couple weeks now that'd be great because you get that bakery truck in the morning you'll get it okay <laughs> i'd rather have it yes sir good evening council members um, my name is dean lasasso i have a business 300 main street Asbury Park, New Jersey. I'm a resident at 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park. I'm here to um, actually continue where she left off. She saw two men urinating. Well, I see about six to seven a night urinating, defecating, vomiting, having sex, busting cars, breaking my windows. I'm here again. Last year I was here. Five windows have been broken in my establishment in two years. I think that's I think I've been more than patient. I'm out there breaking up fights. The police are trying to step up and help, but you know, it takes them a minute or two to get there. And when there's 20 people breaking into a brawl and I see girls getting grabbed by their throat and by men and everything, yes, I do have to go out there and I do have to jump in and I have to help. This is a weekly occurrence. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. I don't feel that the taxpayers should have to foot the bill for all these extra police when these establishments have geared themselves towards you know, supplying alcohol to a thousand people at a pop. And that's great and I'm glad they're being successful and that they're um, thriving. However, they should be required to have off-duty police officers in front of their uh, establishments and to check the corners. Madison Avenue is a free-for-all. Everything goes there, and you know I can't keep getting involved, and I try not to. The other night, somebody was urinating against someone's car. I asked him nicely to stop, and he engaged in calling me every name under the sun and wanting to fight me and everything else. And yes, I could call the police, but by the time they get there, this guy's long gone. This is over and over and over again, and the property damage is getting worse. Um, they're belligerent. They're here to fight. They're here to bust things up, and we need to be protected. And we're going to lose the customers that we've all worked so hard to bring into this city. The families and the people who are here for the weekend to go to the stores, to go to the restaurants, not just to come in and get polluted and bust up the town and go back to wherever they're going. So all I ask is that you seriously consider that there are certain establishments that are where the problems are occurring and they need to have off-duty police officers at their expense to cover that area. And all I can say is we have the beer garden that opened, which is a drinking establishment, and they seem to be able to keep it under control, and very few issues come out of that bar, and yet they're a beer house. So I say look to what they're doing and see why they can control their customers and can keep the area basically from being a free-for-all. And it'll be a much more pleasant city for all of us if we do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Michael? No. I didn't Get set. Nope. Uh, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and go. <laughs> Good evening. Ellen Muller, 1501 Ocean Avenue. I have just three quick issues. Um, number one, I don't know if it's possible if we can get some signage along Ocean Avenue about bike riding on the sidewalks. Now that the summer's upon us and they can't bike ride on the boardwalk, it has become a problem. Multiple bikes along the sidewalks. Number two, last year you generously gave us some trash cans along Ocean Avenue, which helped a tremendous amount in, in the litter. And I'd like to have them back. They were taken away and I understand that. The third is the parking. So now I am to understand that they have raised the rate around our building to $2 an hour, and they have done away with the $10 max. So first, we are denied our second parking pass, take that away, then you triple the price of the one parking pass we can get, and now you have tripled the price of parking by us. So if my grandchildren come to visit me, it costs them $90 for a weekend. 
Now, we are not in the central business district. I do understand we're in the waterfront development area. However, not every street in waterfront development has metered parking. So it's starting to feel very much like this is just an excise tax being leveled against a certain class of citizens. So I would appreciate it that as you look at these parking situations that you stop and you think about how it impacts the quality of the life of the people that live in those areas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And the parking committee meets the first Wednesday of every month. At, okay, so. We'll. And Maggie from North Beach is on it. Please come and voice your complaints there. Okay. Yes, sir. Conrad Nebula, 1218 Sunset Avenue. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to <laughs> take a little time out to acknowledge, like I live three houses from the Sunset Avenue Bridge, or whatever it's called, that goes from Asbury to Wanamasa. And the contractor company that you guys <laughs> hired were extraordinary. They were easy to work with. They really... Uh, you know, they spoke with us. If we had concerns, they addressed the concerns. I just really, I think it's Conti Construction Company. I'm not sure if that's the exact name, but they were excellent, and I just really want to say that. And they're now, on time. And, they were, they're on time. and they're on time. It's amazing. And, and during the winter, they were in the water. I mean, it, it's unbelievable, the work that they did. So from my eyes as a homeowner, Y'all may know different, but from my eyes, they were great. Um, now, I want to know uh, when the city, uh, when's the schedule of the paving, because they paved up into the end of my driveway, but then the rest of the Sunset Avenue, the street is horrendous from all the trucks, heavy trucks and stuff like that. So. My one question is, when is that going to be paved? I know there was a budget uh, some months ago for Sunset Avenue, but I would like to know when that is going to be because it is it's really at a dangerous point, I say, once cars start going over it. That's one question. The other question, well, concern is, since there was the detour, cars were in and out of going into my driveway. So my driveway, the is it called the apron? The part that slopes down, apron, thank you, has gotten damaged. So who can support me and my co-owner um, of the house next door, because we share the driveway, how that can be helped to be repaired? And um, let me see if I had some other question. Yeah. <laughs> um, will be, oh, and, and, and when I spoke to the guys that did the pavement, he said that there may be another contract coming out to do further down Sunset Avenue, the sidewalk on, he mentioned, on, the, on my side, 1218 side. So I don't know if that's true. I would like to know because there's some work that we need to do with our driveway, so I don't, we don't want to do it. It get, you know, I want it to be coordinated. So those are my questions. That's it? Yeah. Okay, as far as... Thank you for complimenting us. It was not the city project. It was a county project with state and federal money and county money. So uh, the laurel should go to uh, Tom Arnone and the county. Uh, as far as your apron, if you're just talking about your driveway goes down and then there's a couple divots, we can fill that in with a uh, cold patch or hot patch. But if you're talking about your apron itself is damaged, Everybody was told within a 500-foot radius, take pictures before and after and address that with the county. So you would have to address that with the county, not the city. And as far as when we're going to pave Sunset Avenue, it's probably not going to be a year. And as far as, well, we have to find the money because we found out that we have I to thought, replace the sewer pipes. Wait a minute. You know, no, your time's up, so I'm answering your questions. And so they're the answers. And, Michael, if you'd like Well, to I still can. The question, your answer kind of contradicts what I was here a couple of months in the winter time, and y'all said that y'all had a budget to do the paving of Sunset Avenue. 
and we could do it right away and pave Sunset Avenue and then rip it up in a year and then put in new sewer pipes to do it all at once at the same time and save taxpayers money. So when we videotape the sewer pipes and they're either terracotta or clay and they're over 100 years old, we have a lot of leakage there, which means that we're getting a lot of I and I into the sewer plant where instead of treating sewage because of the holes in the sewer pipe, we're treating rainwater. It has to be repaired where you know where you live and up towards your end, you've seen the sewer truck out there quite a few times where we've had sewer backups. Well, they're out there now. Right. right. So Tearing up the street again. The, the city is? I don't know. It's the city, I believe. Okay, well, okay. but it, it's not going to be paid for a good year. A year? Yes. And y'all didn't know this a we, year and a half? We've been saying this for the past four months. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Well, if you, if, if you want to put an initiative referendum on the, and I've told um, Conrad, I appreciate you, and I'm not busting your back. No, I don't, I don't want to put anything in. I no, want no. the street paved. And, right. And That's so what I want. If you want to get 2,000 signatures to raise everybody's taxes 500% by paving every street in Asbury Park, we'll, we'll abide by that. But people are saying don't raise our taxes. There has not been a street paved in Asbury Park in four <laughs> to five years. We started a street. I understand that. We I start, under so we're starting a street paving project and Sunset Avenue is on the top of our list. Right. I have, I've, I've heard that, but I've heard that story before. But the thing is, because of the construction, major damage has been done to the street. That's all I'm pointing to. Well, so then that 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 will just with the county. I mean, this is the first time we're hearing from anybody up there that there's been any damage caused to the street by the county construction. So we'll look into that first. I don't know if it's caused, but all of those streets. There was, was a lot of heavy truck. I heard you were there the other day. You didn't see the street? I was in there the other day. I haven't been there in months, unfortunately, and I apologize for that. <laughs> well, okay. Next. Hello, Calvin Anderson, 405 First Avenue. Um, you know, I was listening to the uh, behavior happening in downtown. Um, maybe you should, um, uh, these people, when you catch them, put their names in the paper so you can embarrass them, then people will think not to do it, you know. Um, in the cities in Pennsylvania, when somebody's doing something, you know, deprecating or something, you know, you put the names in the paper and then it stops. Um, my other concern, Springwood Avenue, um, the open space that you have there, I was wondering, you know, can we just start like planting flowers or something there, you know, you just got open lots there, you know, or maybe the community can make a garden, you know, tomatoes and stuff like that, you know, that they can uh, make revenue you know, when they're growing their tomatoes as people come into the city? Well, I was just going to say, Calvin, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about on Springwood Ave. A lot, I, I know a lot of people because it's there's a lot of open, there's a lot of open lots. Yeah, does it mean it's ours? Some of it's tied up with Michael, some of it's tied up in interface. Could you just, could you email, you can email me or Michael specifically where you want to do it? Okay, um, I'll look at the spots and then I'll email you and show you the spots because it would make it look really nice, you know, as people drive through spring, sure whatever. That's our land, Calvin. That's my point too. So I can't give you permission to do that to somebody else's land. Okay, um, I'll just maybe talk to them and work with you to, you know, just make it look nice when we come through there, you know. So um, my um, other concern, okay, it's not a, a bad concern. Um, uh, people flying up and down the streets to get down to the boardwalk. You know, we need, you know, to um, slow them down a little bit. You know, the kids are going to be out, you know, crossing the street and stuff like that. Just to slow them down when they're trying to get to their activities. You know, um, you know they're flying down, you know, first and second, you know, um, not thinking that there's families and kids out there playing and some kid can get hurt. And I, I like your idea about putting names in the paper. I see Alan Hurst does it. I see Deal does it. It's in the yes. poster every week. Police crime blotter. But so we'll get in touch with the coaster and see why they can't get that from Asbury Park and do that. I like that idea. Ah, right, thank you. I, I think that'll work for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, good evening. <clears throat> uh, Warner Baumgartner, uh, Fifth Avenue. I'm going to uh, elaborate a little bit on an issue that T brought up, and that's the lighting on uh, Lake Avenue by the Wesley Grove project there. <clears throat> 
don't know if anyone's noticed this, but there's temporary construction lights that are still there years after Wesley Grove and Lake Avenue have been completed. So I'm wondering, maybe some sort of process uh, is flawed here that somebody signed off as the re reconstruction of that area as being complete, but yet there's still temporary lights there. Um, to be specific, there are these big square concrete blocks, about three foot square, that the crane brings in, and then a temporary light pole is put on top of it. If you look on Lake Avenue, along the lake, between uh, Grand and the end, along Wesley Grove, you'll see all these lights, and uh, there's no reason for them to still be there. The, the permanent approved lighting fixtures should be there. Um, the other thing is, now that the summer season is coming, <clears throat> I see a lot of people walking around in the streets. I bring this up every year, jaywalking. The city seems to have no policy about jaywalking. It is illegal to walk in the street if there's a sidewalk provided, yet people do it all the time, putting themselves at risk, uh, challenging vehicles, being aggressive, walking in the street. I'd like to know what policy could be set up with the police department uh, to deter that and to make it known that Asbury Park will not tolerate jaywalking. It's a hazard to everybody, pedestrians and motorists alike. I would suggest instead of you know pulling people aside and issuing them tickets or whatever, the police vehicles have PA systems. All they need to do is get on the PA and say, excuse me, please get on the sidewalk, right? Doesn't cost anybody any money. They can just do this on a regular basis, maybe post a few signs saying, please use sidewalks. It's irresponsible to be walking around in the street if there's a sidewalk provided for you. And the city needs to take a strong stand on this because thousands of people come for events here. And it's ridiculous the risks that they take walking around in the street, crossing mid-block in front of cars. Something's going to go wrong and the city's going to get sued for not having a policy about this. Thank you. What's your thoughts on that? I'm sure we do have a policy. I'm sure the policy is it's, it's illegal. So we'll, Michael will talk to the police as far as enforcement. As far as uh, I agree with you and T, and it's probably new to Michael as far as those temporary lights. So that's something let him look into, and we'll get you an answer by the next meeting. Great. And <coughs> Michael's going to get mad at me, but I've been complaining. Before Sandy, the traffic light on 3rd and Kingsley has been down. and. I mean, Sandy's four years ago. Why we can't get up a new traffic light on Third and Kings? They just, you know, excuse my language, burns my ass. And it's just like, it, it's like every other town in America has traffic lights, but Asbury Park can't find out where to buy them. I'm like, well, then <laughs> tell the county to loan us two. I mean, it, it's, it, you know, I, how many times have I asked you, when are we going to get a traffic light on Third and Kingsley? And we can't find one. I know the answer. We can't find one. <laughs> No, it says, I told you last week, we're waiting for JCP&L to come to look at the electric box, which is underground. And we emailed Jim Markley asking for him for his assistance on Friday, and we haven't heard from him back yet. It's, right. the, it's the electrical box first, because if we can't put power to the light, there's no point in buying a light. So that's the first step is to see if the power is there, which is JCP&L. And again, that precedes you. That goes back before Sandy. That light was not knocked down during Sandy. That light was knocked down during a 30 mile an hour windstorm where they were guaranteed up to hurricane forces of 120 miles an hour. And again, like Warner said, somebody signed off on it. So let us look into that, Warner. Warner and T, I agree with you, and we'll get back to you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you and I have been here a long time. So we do notice these things because we know the town very well. Um, I'm going to extend an invitation right now to, uh, to Michael to uh, take him on a little tour around town and show him some of the details that may not be obvious, that don't come up at these meetings regularly. It's uh, quite shocking when you actually drive around and point out things that are easy fixes. So, Michael, I hope you take me up on that. Okay. <laughs> we'll get back to It's an you. invite. All right. Okay. Thank you, Warren. Hi, I'm back. Uh, I grew up in... Your name and address, please, Oh, I'm huh? sorry. Anthony DeGano. Uh, I'm a traveler, so I call it Planet Earth. Uh, so I've been at the Jersey Shore 
at major towns all my life. I grew up here on the boardwalk with Danny DeVito, uh, and I uh, seen uh, I'm Italian, so I knew all my uncles that are on the wall here, Frank Fanatino, Adio, Abarelli, all of them. It was awesome, great. Uh, but this winter, to, to explain a little of my background, this winter I spent at the hospital, so I didn't see you out with all your dog affairs, and I ended up losing three, three toes. But I'm back now. I love Asbury. I was a professional photographer, and I got thousands of pictures of the, some good times and bad. But uh, uh, when I came back, I ride through the town, and I see awesome growth in six months. That tells me that Asbury's there. And uh, how do we control it with a beautiful council like we got now? Because I've been through many mayors and councils. Uh, so I'm happy about that. But I'm not here. Oh, no. I see all the growth on this side and equally on this side. And a lot of that's not noticed. But I lived there for a year, and I see it. So I, I want to comment on on how the money gets divided. It does go there. Uh, but I'm not here for that. I'm here on my own to tell you about an asset. OK. Yes, it's always about the wisdom and the power of a team. And you're our team. OK. So I watched a person from the age of 18 grow and learn wisdom and how to tax money, because that's what you need. Uh, to get to the point, I watched this person work and watch her power grow from her mother, who was a very powerful woman. Uh, I watched this person work hard all her life through good times and bad, and it broke my heart as Sandy came through and hurt us all. I prayed and watched her pick her son. I'm using her now, so you kind of can figure out. Pick up and build up Asbury again. That is awesome. That type of person should sit up there to replace, oh, sorry, Joe Warner. And her name is Marilyn Sloshback. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scarano, Long Branch. What I wanted to ask you, um, when they were talking about what people do when they get out of the bar, but I remember, and it still happens, every time they have a big event down by the beachfront, people bring their own beverages and food, and then they leave everything on the curb. The cops should really be on the lookout for that and give tickets for people who litter. They just bag it up and leave it on the curb, and then you'll see the next morning one or two, three, four places where people dump their garbage. So that should be a thing that they should look out for. The other thing about the parking that the lady brought up about, unfortunately, you're left with the holding of the empty bag or whatever because the developers cried they couldn't build two parking spots or two and a half parking spots per unit or you have 65 units in the Savoy, I don't know how many units in the old Steinbeck, but nobody built garages for this, and that's, you guys gotta watch out, you don't get conned with the next developer because that's what happened with, in the past. Now the other thing is, Michael brought up a good point, you have three months for those budget meetings for the department heads, so what, where do I go to find out what happened in those meetings? Do I have to fill out an open request and then have it extracted what I can't find out? Or I'd like to know what the, the budget part is where they're trying to cut back on cost. Um, how do I go about getting that information? Because Michael's been here seven months now, that means there should have been two meetings. That, that's it, thank you. 
I don't know what you're talking about about budget meetings. Um, are you talking about the budget process? Or? No, you t I hope you understand what I said. I thought I made it clear. You said I wanted to know if you had monthly meetings with the department head. And you said by law, it's every three months, Jerry. That's exactly your word. So you've been here seven months. I mean, there should be two meetings. You and I'd like to know how to find out about the information that happened with those two with those meetings that you had with the department heads. It's not a law to have meeting with department heads. What your question to me was um, about reports. And I said, as per the city code, it's supposed to be done quarterly. I'm working on the first quarter report still. I just, okay. So when will we be able to see it then? Hopefully soon. I mean, I'm working on it. It's six, it's 10 departments trying to put it all together. So it's being worked on, but it's being done. Okay. I'm just saying because one way or another, we need to know how much, how fast we're spending the money. And like Sunset Avenue, I'd rather see the county pay for it. I mean, but things like that, we can tell people this is where the money's coming in and this is how we're spending and this is how we cut back because I like to see you guys all reelected. I mean, you're a good team and we need to make sure we have good inf information. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. Um, I was thinking about the bars. Uh, a couple of my friends go downtown all the time and they were saying that there's so many overcrowded conditions going on down there. So maybe the fire marshal should work at night instead of during the day to, uh, they, they said there's even lines to get into the bathroom. So that means that those places are just having crowds of people, which makes it very dangerous in case of a fire. So maybe the fire marshal should work at night and check these bars out. The other thing is about the parking. I live in the 500 block of 8th Avenue and I can't even park in front of my house. You have deal towers now they have their parking lot closed off. They have their dumpsters in the street. And does anybody know what a dumpster's like when the, when the truck comes and pulls up that thing? What kind of noise it makes? We got two dumpsters right across the street from my house right now. And you have businesses that don't have business licenses, but they use their vans and their gigantic vans. I got one right in front of my house now a gigantic one, maybe it seats eight or 10 people, they're running their businesses off our streets. I, I know they don't have, I looked at their license plates, they're not business plates, but there must be a law passed where they can't park in front of your house for three or four days at a cliff, like now, it's Memorial Day weekend. Something has to be done about that. And that's it, you have an answer? I think it's three days that they can park in front of your house. I'm not sure. And then they have to move your car. We used to have a patrolman cook. He used to be good at that, but he's no longer here. So? That's it? That's it. Okay. How about the fire marshal working at night so there's no overcrowded conditions in bars? <laughs> yeah? I know in the past when there's been large potential concerts, he has worked to make sure there is no overcrowding and overselling. Uh, something Mike will, will look into with the fire chief and see what else has to be done. And okay, we only questions? have one fire marshal, right? Do what? One fire marshal? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. No, I know we don't need another. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Dang it. Minutes. We have several sets of minutes. We have April 25th, 2016 workshop meeting, April 27th, 2016 executive session, April 27th, 2016 regular session, May 9th, 2016 workshop session, May 11th, 2016 executive session, and May 11th, 2016 regular session. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We we'll move on to consent agendas. All matters listed on the consent agendas are presented collectively to the City Council and will be considered for approval by one vote. These matters are to be considered routine in nature and there will be no individual discussion on these items. If discussion is desired on one or more council members on one or more particular items, 
Any items shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. We have five items on the consent agenda tonight. First one's 2016-235, resolution authorizing the payment of payroll in the amount of $867,000. $281.04. Resolution 2016-236, Resolution of the City of Asbury Park County and Mama State of New Jersey, authorizing refund due to double payment by buyer and seller, Block 3703, Lot 5.79. Resolution approving, a con I'm sorry, Resolution 2016-237, Resolution approving contract, Roke Industries doing business as njtaxleaninvestor.com for internet-based electric electronic tail tax sale processing for 2016. Resolution 2016-238, resolution authorizing Tyrone A. Young tax budget to complete application to participate in electronic tax sale process. And finally, 2016-240, rejecting proposals for turnkey parking operations related to all regulated parking within the city. Would anybody like any of the items removed from the consent agenda? Have a motion to move the items, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On into individual resolutions. The first one is Resolution 2016-239, Resolution Authorizing Shared Services Agreement with the Township of Neptune for Improvements to Westy Lake. This item was originally on the consent agenda and moved to the individual uh, resolutions. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Second. Any comments or questions? This was changed to one year, not three, correct? Correct. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-241, resolution authorizing the payment of bills in the amount of $371,797.10. Mayor Moore advised me that he will be abstaining from the line item 6-01-23-220-000-209. And I was also uh, asked to hold um, all the IT bills. Can I have a motion to approve the bills? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. As far as holding the IT bills, so somebody will get in touch with finance before they're put in the mail tomorrow? I'll let them know first thing in the morning. Okay. Resolution 2016-242, resolution authorizing the city of Asbury Park to enter into a joint purchasing agreement. Have a motion, please. Hold it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-243, resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application for the 2016 Cops and Shop Summer Short Initiative Grant Program. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-244, resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application for COPS hiring program, CHP. You have a revised resolution in your seat tonight. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2016-245, authorizing contract with Byfly LLC to provide electronic beach badge system. Again, this resolution's at your seat. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Sure. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2002-246. Resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park designating Interfaith Neighbors, Inc. as a redeveloper for the parcel known as Turf Club, Lot 803, Lots 1 through 14 in the Springwood Avenue redevelopment area and approving a redevelopment agreement buying between the City and Interfaith Neighbors. I believe you guys wanted to table this. Yeah. I have a motion to table. Motion to table. All in favor? 
Resolution 2016-247, resolution amending temporary appropriations <coughs> for 2016. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-248, resolution of the City of Asbury Park, Asbury Park's Council, filling the unexpired term of Council Member Joe Warner. Um, this evening, the appointment will be made will be made to Miss Eileen Chapman. Can I have a motion to move, please? Second. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Do you want to swear right now? Mm -hmm. We'll go down here. I have a okay. Left here. Okay. We'll move on to ordinances introduction. Ordinance 2016 20, refunding bond ordinance authorizing the issuance of not to exceed. 2250000 aggregate principal amount of general obligation refunding bonds by the City of Asbury Park and the County of Monmouth State, New Jersey to the Monmouth County Improvement Authority for the pur purpose of refunding certain bonds hereto issued by the City to the MCIA. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for June 8, 2016. Ordinance 2016-21, establishing a restricted parking space for, for use by handicapped persons. A property located at 1310 3rd Avenue, designated as Block 1103, Lot 48, in the City of Asbury Park, and amending and supplementing Section 7-36, entitled Handicapped Parking, of Chapter 7 traffic of the revised general ordinances of the city of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Have a motion to introduce? So moved. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for June 8, 2016. Ordinance 2016 22, an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Section 63, Administration Set Aside Program. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? <coughs> Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for June 8, 2016. Ordinance 2016 to 23, ordinance amending Chapter 8, Section 1, Property Improvement and Neighbor Preservation Property Maintenance Code. I believe uh, there's a motion to table this, res uh, this ordinance. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. <coughs> Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? This is a table. A table. This is a table, yes. yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2016-24, an ordinance creating Chapter 3, Section 39, Police Regulations, Police and Fire Alarm Systems. Can I have a motion, please, to introduce? Move it. Have a second. second. Any comments or questions? No. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for June 8, 2016. Ordinance 2016-25, an ordinance in amending and supplementing Chapter 7, Traffic, Subsection 7-41, Meter Parking of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park. Have a motion to introduce, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public, is, public hearing is scheduled for June 8, 2016. And I'm sorry, all those ordinances, it's not June 8th, it's June 15th. So all these matters are going to be scheduled for June 15th. It's primary election day. 2016-26, approving and adopting amendment to the Central Business District Redevelopment Plan relating review of certain uses within the Central Business District Redevelopment Area for sound mitigation. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Just one quick comment. I would like to 
thank the planning board for having a special meeting last night to move this forward to correct a wrong. So thank, I thank the planning board. And the only thing I'll say is now restaurants um, that have previously been shut down from playing any sort of background music, including toast, cart, whatever, now can play um, light background music until 10 p.m. Did, am I, did I say something wrong, Michelle? No. Well, this is the introduction. Okay. Nobody you can't yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> any other comments? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for June 15, 2016. We're now on to second reading. Ordinance 2016-11, an ordinance amending and supplementing section 7-20 entitled One Way Streets to Chapter 7, Traffic of the Code of the City of Asbury Park. I have a motion to open ordinance 2016-11 to the public, please. Move it. Second. All in favor? <coughs> Werner. Yes, uh, Warner Baumgartner, Fifth Avenue. Um, I'm looking at what was handed out at the front desk over there as far as the uh, ordinance, and I'm wondering why the additional block, which is also one way on Sunset Avenue between Webb and Kingsley, is not called out in this ordinance. Can I clarify it? It says Sunset Avenue between Ocean and Kingsley is one way west. Well, it's been one way west for about 10 years, 15 years maybe. Um, so now we're up updating the ordinance. But recently, within the last month, Sunset Avenue between Kingsley and Webb was also turned into one way west. Why is that not accounted for in this ordinance? Good question. I'm waiting for an answer from down Yeah, there. Whoosh, I hear tumbleweeds or something here. Throw the clock on. My we don't have an answer. My, 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 table. No, no, no. My suggestion actually is that you move forward to adopt this tonight so you get the other areas taken care of and simultaneously introduce a new ordinance this evening extending that area of sunset um, through web. That way you're not holding it up for the other streets. I mean, if in fact this was supposed to be included, we can move forward with it separately. In the meantime, you get the other ones taken care of. Well, I'm, I'm going to make an easier suggestion. Just add the word web between Ocean and Web instead of between Ocean and Kingsley and get well, it over and get and it over with. Isn't as easy as it sounds. De minimis change, right? It's two different streets, Warner. Yeah, that's that's no, not de minimis. It's sunset is one <laughs> that's street. It's not a typo. <laughs> it, it's extending one way to a new street. This an, wasn't advertised. Another block. Including another block of it being one way, although it's maybe. It, it it's is done. It's done. It's a done deal. It's part of the, 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 just to clarify for anybody who doesn't know this, this area is the redevelopment area. And these street changes were approved back in 2000 something as part of the redevelopment plan. So now finally we're getting around to doing this infrastructure and changing the streets that were approved 16 years ago to be rerouted to one way, narrowed, diagonal parking instead of parallel parking, all of these things that are going on down there between Webb, Fifth, and uh, Sunset are part of the redevelopment plan. And I guess the ordinance is just now catching up to what the plan called for. So I don't know, I'll, I'll leave it to legal counsel to figure this out. I think just adding web instead of Kingsley add the extra block and get it over with makes sense but I don't think it can be I mean and I'm, and I'm not a municipal attorney but I don't think it, 
that isn't a, a, a nominal change. It's okay. It's not like yeah. go, putting at instead of the. Correct. So I'm not, I'm not comfortable just switching this ordinance and, and adding web. I mean, we can certainly fix that at some mm. point, but. I don't think we should. Okay. Well, that's, that's why Fred gets the big bucks. You know, it's good legal <laughs> advice. All right. <laughs> it, it substantially alters the substance of the ordinance. Okay, good. Even though it's already out there done, the ordinance wasn't written that way. So uh, I would okay. suggest that you don't hold the other ones up, that you move forward, adopt this one tonight, and you could either have an ordinance prepared for first reading at the next meeting to fix the rest of the problem, or you could introduce one by title this evening and start the process tonight with a separate ordinance number after you vote to approve this on second reading. It's up to you. I think just put it on for first reading at the next meeting. So okay. we're looking at a copy and reading it. Sure. And like yeah. voting on something if I haven't looked at it. Okay. Okay. So. okay. All right. Um, I guess that's about it. The one, just one other nitpick that I need to point out that I, I don't know how this happened. Fifth Avenue, which is called out in this ordinance as being changed to one way eastbound between Webb and Kingsley. Okay, it's already done. Um, somehow ended up narrower than the redevelopment plan calls for and with less parking spaces than the redevelopment plan calls for. So I'm just raising this issue as a FYI to the council as the redevelopment authority. Somebody built Fifth Avenue in front of the new Asbury Hotel, contrary to what the plan says. And I'm wondering what the process was, if any, that made that happen. I don't think it was done properly. So with that said, thank you. Comments or questions? Council Member Clayton. The only comment, yes, uh, Warner raised a good point. So if, if we're being told by the developer that we cannot change Sunset Avenue, where we wanted to keep it two ways, yet he didn't go, because it's not in the plans, but he changed the plans on Fifth Avenue, I want to know why also. So, when can we get that answer? I'll email by tonight. Okay. Any other comments? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Same. Councilmember, or Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2016 uh, 15. The ordinance of the City of Asbury Park authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with AEF. Urban Renewal LLC and Savoy Motion Urban Renewal. Motion to table. Table. Move Please it. let me get the uh, set and set. Just pull. Just pull <laughs> Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2016-19, establishing a restricted parking space for use by handicapped persons at property located at 1215 Springwood Avenue. Designated as Block 1103, Lot 48 in the City of Asbury Park, amending and supplementing 7-36, entitled Handicapped Parking, a Chapter 7 traffic of the revised general ordinances in the City of Asbury Park. Motion to open to, to public, please. Move it. Second. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Motion to adopt Ordinance 2016-19. Move it. Have a second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. All right, up this time we're up to swearing in our new council member. I can have Ms. Chapman come up in front and bring anybody who would like to hold the Bible for you.
the United States and in this state under the authority of the people and I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of the office of the City of Asbury Park, Council Member, according to the best of my ability.